Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and we continue with our topic of discussion. And the topic is genetics, a topic in form for biology. And uh, today, uh, having discussed the DNA, its structure, and the role of the DNA in our previous lesson, uh, today we are going to discuss the first law of inheritance. And this first law of inheritance is also referred to as the law of segregation. The law of segregation. Uh, now, um, uh, first of all, uh, this first law of inheritance was arrived at by a biologist who is referred to as the father of modern uh, genetics, the father of modern genetics, and that is Gregor Mendel. And Gregor Mendel uh, came up with this law after carrying out a number of experiments. After carrying out a number of experiments uh, using the garden pea. The garden pea, uh, also known as P. sum uh, sativum. Uh, now, uh, before we get into the details about what the law of inheritance, the first law of inheritance states, uh, it's important to understand the Mendel's experiments. Mendel's experiments. The experiments that were carried out uh, by Gregor Mendel. Uh, so first of all, we are saying that uh, Gregor Mendel carried out his experiments using the garden P, which is scientifically known as P. Sam Sativam. Is a scientific name, so it's important you write it according to the rules of binomial nomenclature, whereby the first letter of the genus name should be capitalized and all the other letters should be small. Uh, the species name should be small letters entirely. They should be underlined separately when handwritten. <coughs> and of course, when uh, uh, they are typed in printed work, they should be in italics. Now, uh, Gregor Mendel carried out experiments using the garden pea. And the first question I would want us to ask ourselves, why he chose the garden pea? Why Gregor Mendel, or why Mendel, chose the garden pea? One, the garden pea has many observable has many observable variations has many observable variations e.g. the length of the pod, the texture of the seeds, whether they are smooth or they are wrinkled, the color of the flowers, etc. 
So in other words, we are saying that uh, the garden P has many observable variations. There are so many variations that you can be able to observe in the garden P. And that's why he chose it. That's why he chose it as opposed to other plants that he could have used. Now, two, the garden P can either be self-pollinated or cross-pollinated. Can either be cross self-pollinated or cross-pollinated. So it doesn't suffer from what we call the, uh, the factors that hinder self-pollination. So this one can either be uh, self-pollinated or cross-pollinated. That's why it was a suitable choice for carrying out his experiments. Uh, number three, <coughs> the garden pea has a short generation gap. The gap between one generation and the other. Uh, so that means fast maturing or fast maturity. So that's why again he chose the, the garden pea. So we are saying that uh, uh, the, it has many observable variations or many observable characteristics. Uh, we can either uh, uh, self-pollinate or cross-pollinate it. Yeah, it has a short generation gap and so on and so forth. Now, among the experiments that uh, the, uh, this uh, biologist did, uh, he planted uh, the garden pea and realized that uh, he got a mixture of tall and short plants. And in the next generation, he would take the tall plants, obtain their seeds, and then use them for the next generation. And still he would get uh, a mixture. Then he came up with a, he came up with a conclusion that even the tall ones, even the tall garden peas had some traits had some traits of shortness in them and that is why by crossing them among this among themselves or by selfing the tall ones there was the likelihood of getting a, a shot there was the likelihood of getting a shot so he concluded that uh, mendel from his experiments concluded that each characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors. Each characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors and only one of each of those factors can exist in a gamete. I'll elaborate that. So we are saying that Mendel concluded that each characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors. And only one of those factors exist in a gamete. And then he called this the law of segregation. So that is the first law that Mendel came up with. And we are saying that the conclusion from the experiments that he did using the garden pea, he came up with a conclusion that uh, each 
characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors and only one of those factors exists in a gamete. Uh, I would want to paraphrase that statement in a different manner. And I would say that as human beings, the characteristics that we have are as a result of two parents. We have a male parent and a female parent. So we have the gametes from the male parent and those from the female parents coming together to determine the characteristics that we have. So we are saying that the characteristics that we have in organisms is as a result of a pair of hereditary factors. And every member of each pair has come from either of the parents. This member of the pair from that parent, this member of the pair from the other parent, and then the pairs come together to determine the, the traits that we have. So we are saying that every characteristic uh, is determined by a pair of hereditary factors and only one of those factors exists in a gamete. So a gamete contains only one of such factors. These factors are the ones that were later discovered to be genes. These are the factors that were later discovered to be genes. But at this point, they had not been known, uh, they had not been referred to as the genes. They were just called hereditary factors. But at the back of our mind, we know that these are the current genes that we have. Now, um, we want to ask ourselves, uh, why was Mendel successful even when many biologists ahead of him had failed. Why was Mendel successful uh, with his uh, uh, experiments? One is that he dealt with one characteristic at a time. He dealt with one characteristic at a time. For example, if it is the length of the pod, he just dealt with the length of the pod. And he discovered that the length of the pod does not affect the texture of the seed. So there is independent, there is independent way in which the length of the pod is determined as opposed to the texture of the seed. Most biologists uh, ahead of Mendel had looked at this thing wholesomely and they sought to understand what determines the characteristics of an entire organism and that's why they were not very successful but Mendel took one particular trait at a time so one he studied one trait at a time as opposed to those ahead of him that sought to understand the organism entirely in its entire in it in its entirety <clears throat> then another th reason why he was very successful he chose his specimens well eg the garden p in fact you can see that he he chose he used suitable materials eg the garden p can either 
be selfed or cross pollinated so there was a higher success factor there <coughs> Uh, another reason why he was very successful, he kept a record of all the outcomes that were obtained during the experiments. So in his experiments, he was able to uh, keep a record of all the outcomes in the experiments and used them for future reference. So those outcomes were recorded and used for future reference. So again, that's another reason that uh, made him uh, very successful. And, of course, uh, he did experiments that had or that took within, uh, that were able to give the results within a very short time. Now, <clears throat> that is as far as the experiments that were carried out by Gregor Mendel, why he chose the Garden P. We have seen the reason why. Uh, why he was very successful in an area where most people had not succeeded and what he came up with. So he came up with the law that we have said that is the law of um, segregation that says that uh, uh, each characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors. And as I've said, this pair of hereditary factors are the ones that came to be later known as the genes. And only one of those factors exists in a, in a gamete. So we'll stop there for now and then have a short assignment. So the assignment, the first question, explain why Mendel was very successful in his experiments where many people had failed before. Uh, two, state the first law of inheritance. So we are going to stop there for today. Until next time, goodbye.